DFS LOL coming at you today on Tuesday with this week's uh, fantasy stats that we we came up with from week one that you should probably know about. So I just want to jump right into it and give you a little bit of details and information. So so first of all, over Gurley's last 16 games, he's totaled 890 yards on 282 carries, which gives him a 3.16 uh, YPC, and if you average that over uh, a full-time season, it's uh, the third worst all-time in yards per carry average. So uh, Gurley continued that performance this weekend. Overall, he put up a good fantasy game. However, uh, his yards per carry were just pretty dreadful against the Colts. I wasn't expecting the Colts to have a very good run defense, so it's just definitely something to consider in the future. I uh, wouldn't look at uh, selling. He's still the only game in town for the Rams. He'll get a lot of goal line carries, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, also last regular season, the Falcons allowed 13 rushing fantasy points per game and 14.5 receiving fantasy points per game. And that's the most two opposing running backs. In the uh, postseason, James White recorded 31 fantasy points, receiving fantasy points against the Falcons, and that helped them to lead them to Super Bowl victory. And on Sunday, they allowed 23.1 receiving fantasy points to Jordan, Howard, and Cohen, and could have given up even more had Howard not dropped that ball in the end zone. So it just goes to show you that the Falcons really aren't great at all against the opposing catch pass catching back so coming into this weekend Ty Montgomery is exactly that he's a running back but he's also a wide receiver so whenever they're up against a team or a player like that just just have the expectation that uh, they may get hurt on that side of things number three Julio Jones caught four of five targets for just 66 yards against the Bears. He ran 29 routes and with just three coming into the slot and he got zero targets in the slot. Last season under Shanahan, Jones ran 26% of his routes from the slot and was frequently moved around the line of scrimmage to create more favorable matchups. So just to take away there, uh, Julio Jones isn't as denied dynamic as he was last year under the Shanahan office. Offense, he's more running plays from the same line, more predictable. Uh, using the Bears defense played in cover six, he was, uh, they managed to shut him down much more easily this year than they were able to uh, last year. Number four, Hopkins saw 15 targets catching seven for 55 yards. And a touchdown, uh, Watson threw 23 passes, completing 12 for 102 yards and a touchdown. And Hopkins accounted for over 47% of Watson's uh, pass attempts and yards, as well as the only touchdown pass. So as uh, Hopkins for a fantasy production, of course, if we see Watson coming in starting next week, definitely somebody you want to target because there's some uh, serious chemistry between the two that's for sure number five among all receivers on Sunday Ricky uh, Kenny Goladay ranked third in end zone targets and seventh in yards in the air he ended his day catching four of seven passes for 69 yards and two touchdowns he was I'm pretty sure top three third receiver of the week um, his production was very high because there was a lot of attention for Golden Tate and Marvin Jones by the Cardinals, uh, pretty explosive uh, cornerbacks. So Golden definitely had the chance to stand out. Is it possible that he can repeat this sort of thing? I, I don't think it's uh, that likely, but we'll have to see how he does in the coming weeks. I'll be back later today with my recap video. And then we'll we'll go from there. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share. If you want to sign up for DFN, click the link below, and we'll talk to you soon.